Network Security and Penetration Testing. Today we are going to cover chapter number four, which talks about sniffers. Now, sniffers play an important role uh, in capturing the traffic on the network. Now, there are uh, reasons why we do that. First of all, it is done in order to check the connectivity and overall performance of the machines. How the traffic is uh, going on in the uh, network, what's the speed of it, latency checks, and other things. And of course, you want to check the security of the overall network, that how the traffic is being uh, sent out on the network, and if anyone is capable to capture their traffic or not. Objectives of this chapter is to identify the sniffers, recognize type of sniffers, discover the working of sniffers, and appreciate the functions that sniffers use on a network. So we'll try to understand how actually they are working on a network environment. List types of sniffer programs, implement methods used in spotting the sniffers, and list the techniques used to protect the network from the sniffers. Now a sniffer, or we call it a packet sniffer application that monitors and filters and captures the data and packets transferred over the network. Sniffers are nearly impossible to detect in operations, not anymore because the uh, next generation firewalls, they can easily detect it and they can even reset the communication between the uh, client and the attacker. Uh, can be implemented from nearly any computer type of the sniffers are bundled, commercial, or free. So we'll stop over here and we'll try to understand how are they working actually? And how are they able to collect the data in order to uh, guess the information which is being sent out on the network? Now you know there are some secure protocols through which we send the traffic on the network and some there are some unsecure protocols. Unsecure protocols are for example Telnet. If you're sending any traffic through te Telnet, it's not through a secure channel and whatever you're sending over the network, the packets can be captured, it can be opened, and the text appears as a clear text format. Now even if you're passing the password on Telnet um, and the packets are captured, that password would be leaked out with the username because whatever you're sending on the network in a clear text format will be readable. Now, if you are using SSH, which is a secure uh, uh, protocol in order to uh, communicate between two parties, it is secure, it cannot be decrypted even. If someone captures the packet, it's not that easy to uh, open the packets and read what's written in that. Now, what used to happen when we had hubs and switches is, the functionality of a hub is that it's a dumb terminal or it's a dumb device where it does not have a brain. Whatever you want to send to any computer or any client on the network, the traffic that is generated can be captured by any machine on the network. So if you are sending a packet to one computer, instead of going to one computer, it would be sent out to all computers. So anyone can capture the packets and get the details about the overall communication, whatever is taking place between the two computers. When the switches came in and routers came in, they were smart enough to address the computer based on their MAC addresses, and if a packet is sent to a computer, it would reach out to the partner where it is intended to reach, okay? Now, in order to perform sniffer operations, what happens is there is a very known uh, protocol which we call ARP. ARP is Address Resolution Protocol. And in order to sniff and in order to fool your routers, they use a command called, a, a technique called ARP poisoning. So what it's doing actually is that instead of sending a packet or communication of you between the router and your computer, it would try to break that and it would tell it that actually that router is not there. I'm in the middle, you send me a packet, I'm the router, and I'll be sending it to the other person. 
So through the protocols, you'll be in the middle of the communication. We call it man in the middle. That's a very common name when it comes to capturing the packets and sniffing the networks, man in the middle. Now you'll fool the device and the router. You'll tell the router that the device is not there. I'm the router and you'll tell the router that the device is not there, you're there in the middle. So in both ways, you are fooling the partners just to be in the middle and to capture the packets. When you'll capture the packet, you'll open it, you'll get the details of it and then pass on the information which is required or not required. So that's the functionality, basic functionality of a sniffer, why it X and how it fools around the other parties on the network. Now sniffers are nearly impossible to detect and operations. There are type of sniffers called the bundled, commercial or free. The bundled sniffers come bundled with specific operating systems. For example, network monitoring comes with bundled with Microsoft Windows. Like in order to send certain commands and in order to check the connectivity of the computers, there are certain built-in commands in Windows which you can use in order to get the details about the other computers. TCP dump comes with uh, any open source Unix like operating systems like Linux, etc. Snoop is a bundle with Solaris operating systems and Net, Net, uh, NTTL and NetFMT packet sniffing utilities are bundled with HP UX operating system. They are not using it that much. It's only for the mainframe and other systems. Now the commercial sniffers observe and monitor and maintain the information on a network. That what is going on on the network. Now there is a difference between a free and a commercial sniffer. A commercial one is of course paid. There will be a support for that. If there are any discrepancies as far as the reporting is concerned, you can reach out to the support and they'll help you out. Whereas in the free sniffers, there is no support. There are only open forums with the help of which you can get some support. Now, some companies use sniffer programs to detect network problems, can be used for both fault analysis and detect the network problems, performance analysis, which detects the bottlenecks. So, if your connection is slow in between, if you're trying to communicate between two devices, you use the sniffers in order to detect that. Now, free sniffers used to observe, monitor, and maintain the information on a network, just like Warwick Shark. We use Wireshark in order to capture the packets on the network. Can be used for both fault analysis and performance analysis. Difference between a commercial and free sniffers are commercial sniffer, sniffers generally cost money, but typically come with support. Now support on free sniffers in, is minimum. Now sniffer operations must work with the type of the network interface supported by your operating system. For example, if you are using a wireless adapter or you are using a network cable, it would detect it and it would capture the packets based on the interface which is active. Sniffers look only for the traffic passing through the network interface adapter, whether it's a wired connection or a wireless connection. You can read the traffic on the network segments upon which your computer resides. So whenever we are capturing a uh, pa a packet on the network, it is usually captured as a PCAP file. You can save it later. You'll start capturing the, uh, the traffic. Once you'll capture enough traffic, you'll close it and then it will generate a file. Now there are certain third party websites through which you can upload your packet file and they can decrypt it so that you can see. Because once you will uh, capture the packets and you'll post it on the a website or if you'll open it, you'll not be able to read any contents of the, uh, of the captured traffic. It would be appearing as ASCII characters or unreadable text with some text which you can read but most of the information would be unreadable. So that's why we use these websites in order to decrypt the uh, traffic and to read what's written in that. Now hardware NIC is the hardware most needed, then the capture driver captures the network traffic from the ethernet connection and filters out the information that you don't want and then store the filter traffic information in a buffer. Buffer is a dynamic area or just a RAM where it holds the data. Just like you can see over here, the NIC 
the adapter traffic is being captured by the capture driver, then it goes to the buffer. Once it goes to the buffer, they decode the traffic which is coming, there will be a packet analysis and then it would show you the output. So that's a standard procedure of how it is captured and how it moves on. Now the buffer is a method of storing and capturing the data stored until the buffer is full with the information. It's called a round robin method. A round robin method is that it would balance the load in a way that if first packet is coming, it's going to server number one. If second is coming, it's going to server number two and three and so on. So it would keep on going in a circular motion, making sure that all servers have equal load and it would follow a process. It means that it's a sequential way of um, handling the request and authorizing them. Now decoder is interrupts the binary information and then displays it in the readable format because it is detecting it as 101s. And then it would be showing it in a readable format. Packet analysis is a sniffer usually provides real time analysis of captured packets where you'll be able to get the information and the output right on your screen. Now it's very important that where you would place a sniffer, a sniffer can be implemented anywhere on a network, sniffer is best strategically placed in a location where only the required data will be captured. Because if someone would like to capture traffic within an environment, it would put it behind the firewall so that your firewall is not stopping it or maybe you will not be detected by the firewall. So it would be placed in a office environment where you have 10 to 12 computers for example. It could be installed on one of the computers where it would capture the traffic within that network. Some sniffers are normally placed on computers, cable connections, routers, network segments connected to the internet or the network segments connected to the servers that receive the passwords. Now as you can see in this example, there are lots of places that they have identified as number one, then two, three, four, five, six, seven. So they are just trying to show that these are the places where you can place the sniffers. But it really depends if it is helping you in reaching or collecting the information what you're looking for. For example, if you'll place it on the gateway router over here, the sniffer in order to collect all the information, first of all, the information would be, which would be collected on a gateway router would be huge because everything would be coming in over there from all machines on the network. So immediately, it would be a very huge file which you don't want. And the other problem is if you'll put it over here, your firewall would detect it immediately. So it should not be placed at a place. Number two is in a demilitarized zone, in a circle where you have a subnet and you have a mail server and a web server. So if you are placing it over here, it could collect all the information related to the mail servers and the web servers. Now if you are placing it on three after the firewall, and between 24 port switch, it can collect the information of these two different subnets, which is accounting subnet and R&D department. But if you are focusing only on R&D department and not on accounting department, the information that you would collect would be useless. Lots of information. So strategically, if it's placed for the R&D department in one of the computers on a com uh, in a R&D department submit, you'll be able to collect the information for the R&D computers only. Same goes for accounting subnet. If you want to collect the information of the accounting subnet, you'll place this over there. If you want to collect the information about the authentications and other things, it would be placed on a radius server. So they plan it strategically that how you will get access and how those sniffers will be placed. Now the question is that uh, sniffer, how the sniffer will be placed if uh, no one has access to the network. If one machine is compromised, what they do is they send a Trojan horse. Once a Trojan is there, it would be placed on a computer and it would open a port to communicate on the network 
for the sniffer to send the packets and it would be captured so that it could be used later. So we'll stop it over here. We'll continue it in our next session.